This is the future. This video is all about the Arsenal divide, or the melee nerfs and gun buffs that Digital Extremes will be doing in the Sisters of Pavos update. Okay, this is not a rant video in case you want to click away. Instead of doing that, I will be giving you information on how these things will affect specific combos, warframes, and builds in the game. Also, I will share my opinion on the pros and cons of each buffs and nerfs for the melee and gun system. So, let's cut any long introduction and begin this video. First, let's discuss the attack speed nerf for melee weapons. Now, this is actually a good change since the developer did not nerf attack speed bonus, but only the berserker mod. I thought that they would lower the attack speed cap bonus that we gain from mods and abilities but, they only nerf berserker which is a good thing in my opinion. From now on, instead of getting the attack speed bonus from this mod per critical hit, you will obtain it per kill and it can only stack 2 times now for a maximum of 70% attack speed bonus for 10 seconds. Also, they pointed out that this mod will not stack with Prime Fury anymore. I don't know about you, but once this change is implemented, I think I will go with Primed Fury for most of my melee builds. Simply because the 55% attack speed bonus of the Primed mod is more reliable than Berserker when this change is applied. This is just a personal preference, though still. The Berserker mod cost lesser mod capacity than Primed Fury and most of the newer players can get it right away compared to Primed Fury. Also, kills in this game aren't that hard knowing the melee weapons will still outshine primary and secondary despite the upcoming nerfs. The fact is, players will still fancy using melee weapons in star chart missions or steel path since it can hit multiple enemies in each swing compared to most guns that are single targets. They did not also mentioned about abilities not stacking with attack speed mods anymore so, it's safe to say that for all kitties warcry will still boost your attack speed, and also, vault whack and slash will still exist. Not to mention that wisp and other warframes that have speed bonuses will work with melee mods too. While it won't be a big problem, but I see a slight decrease in effectiveness for Exodia Contagion builds. The projectile of Exodia Contagion depends on attack speed mods and speed buff abilities so, I think you will have a very small problem with its projectile speed. But it's too small to even notice since Exodia Contagion kills faster and they didn't nerf combo counter which is also a good thing for this update. I'm quite surprised they didn't touch the combo counter, but it's a good move by Digital Extremes since many will be furious if they did this. In my opinion, touching the combo counter will probably just revert their melee 3.0 rework, and it's good to know that we can still keep the fast method of acquiring combo count because honestly, the combo counter at max will be the only one keeping the community interested in using the next mod that will also get nerf in the Sisters of Pavos update, the Acolyte mod called Blood Rush. If Digital Extremes nerf the combo counter, then this Blood Rush mod will suck so hard since it will only give 40% chance stacks with combo multiplier. This only means that we need that max combo count right now to even hit orange critical numbers on those heavy crit weapons. The purpose of this nerf is to discontinue the usage of Blood Rush to instant red crit at max combo count without the need of Riven mods or even Gladiator mod set. So basically, to hit that red crit now, we need Riven's and the Gladiator mod set trick. Well, obviously you stupid robot voice. However, it's easier said than done knowing that equipping Helios and Deconstructor with at least two Gladiator mods will make you miss out on Smeter Cavat buffs and other pets abilities. Also, the Riven disposition for most melee weapons right now kinda sucks and it would take a good roll to even get those red crit numbers in your melee mod. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you will still be no better off getting critical damage over critical chance on your Riven as additional critical chance has diminishing returns. And I'm not just referring to normal melee weapons here, those exalted melees, like Korra's Whipclaw, and Atlas Landslide abilities will get hit by this Blood Rush nerf. You can still easily reach over 300% crit chance by using a Riven and or Deconstructor Gladiator mods. Atlas on the other hand will be stripped of the ability to deal constant yellow critical damage every punch. After the melee rework, critical chances proved valuable in increasing the punching power of Atlas. It may not appear to be red crit, but the boost in critical chance is enough to gain extra strength for more damage. But after the Blood Rush nerf, I guess we need to rely on our Kane Avenger, 
or other sources to build up that critical percentage. Better yet, we might revert to the old ways of no crit mods for Atlas Landslide. The 20% drop in critical chance bonus would definitely change almost every critical builds. I'm not saying that it will be chaotic but, it would take more than just modding I guess to help you get that red crit numbers especially with those weapons that are not heavy in critical chance stats. Next we have the condition overload nerf, along with the nerf of one of the best primer guns in the game. The Kuvanuka condition overload will now only have 80% melee damage per status type affecting a target. This is a big drop if you ask me but certainly makes it balance against the primed pressure point mod. While it's not a big deal but I'm not a big fan of this nerf because most of the time, condition overload setup outshines primed pressure point only if you are using a fast attack build in your melee weapon. It's still favorable to have primed pressure point in those heavy attack builds for the constant death blow. I don't know if digital extremes know this fact, but there's a distinction in building for a condition overload and primed pressure point setup. I know that the damage of condition overload is far superior when you have inflicted a lot of status on enemies but, primed pressure point is preferable in heavy attacks especially those weapons that rely on slash and bleed procs on each heavy blow. I think the nerf to this mod is too much and it should be at least 100% bonus damage per status. Also, Kuvanuka doesn't warrant a nerf since Sido still exists. I really can't see a good reason why they have to nerf Kuvanuka since other guns exist that are great in inflicting status on enemies. Maybe they wanted to nerf it since you can use Kuvanuka along with Glaives. Well, if you are talking about the throne mechanic, condition overload doesn't give anything to throne mechanics. You are better off with primed pressure point. They crippled the utility of Kuvanuka which is kind of a dumb move in my opinion. Condition overload melee with Kuvanuka is indeed powerful. But Seedo also the same thing. The Zakti Prime can also do the same thing. Hell, I can even make an Exodia Contagion build to proc status if I wanted to. This is one nerf I don't agree with but don't mind me, I'm just giving my two cents about this change. Moving on, we got the Glaive changes which lowers the effectiveness of its throne mechanic. The funny thing is, Digital Extremes said that they won't touch any of the stats of weapons. But they did nerf the direct hit and radial damage of the glaives along with its wind up speed. From 0.6, it's now 1.2 seconds so you can watch how amazing the animation of a thrown melee weapon is. Now, you will decide to opt out for a fast attack glaive build and get mesmerized by the awesome stances that it has. Good stuff. Next. Let's tackle how they will increase the power of primary and secondary weapons. Now I posted a video about a possible leak on new primary and secondary mods, but I guess they are currently placeholders and we might see them shortly. For now, what Digital Extremes showed us are a couple of new gun specific arcanes, and the galvanized mods for both primary and secondary weapons. The intention to buff guns with these arcane and mods are there, but the execution is flawed in my opinion. First of all, the arcanes proc only on kill. I know most of you will tell me that it's not a problem since you can kill easily even high level enemies but the thing is, there are also those players who love running endurance runs and it would be better if the damage buff will proc after you do a headshot, or even a critical hit to the enemy so it would be reliable even against enemies higher than 300 levels or more. You can also argue that it's easy to kill enemies with the right weapons and setup but that's also the problem, not all weapons are powerful. And remember that single target guns exist and it would be much better if they will receive the buff easier after landing a headshot or critical chance, and not by waiting for it to kill a single enemy. On the galvanized mods, I see little problems that can be fixed easily by digital extremes before launch. First of all, they should lower the mod capacity drain of all galvanized mods to make it useful especially for those mean max builds. There are times where players form a weapon 9 times for a mean max build, having all necessary damage, elemental, critical, and even riven mod just to get the most benefit from a gun. And with how much the new galvanized mods cost, don't expect that you can fit this in your mean max builds. You will need to sacrifice another mod to fit this galvanized version. Another issue about these mods is that their acquisition is gated to steel path which in the first place, these mods are supposed to help us conquer steel path missions. I don't get the decision of getting these mods in steel path mission when they are supposed to make steel path easy. They should be acquired in levels wherein all players can obtain them before steel path levels. And of course, there's the on kill mechanic again. Just like the arcanes, on kill mechanics are proven to be unreliable for players. On kill is a strict design failure for a mod that is intended to give players more power at higher levels, needing to kill enemies that you struggle to kill. In addition, on kill also suffers from competition against other players, 
or even the user's Warframe abilities. Overall, it's a mechanic that digital extremes should forget if they want guns to be powerful with these new arcanes and galvanized mods. I'm hoping in the next few days, we will see them changing this mechanic, then add and fix all the stuff we showed here on this video. Let me know your thoughts about the arsenal divide in the comment section below. Do you agree with the buffs and nerfs? Or did Digital Extremes overdid it? Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. Evolution. This is the future.